as someone who used to run things behind the scene, what you make of what we're witnessing in and around Whitehall at the moment? It's pretty unprecedented, I think, in, in two ways. Uh, the first is that normally when a government gets into trouble, it's because it's doing something that is either very unpopular with your viewers or it's doing something that is unpopular internally with its party. Whereas the problems the current government have got are all about the prime minister's behaviour, essentially. They're not about a policy uh, issue. And then I think the second way in which it's unprecedented is both, you know, I as a former politician and you as a journalist, I think we would probably agree that whenever a government has a difficult story, the best way to handle it is to get all the facts out there as quickly as possible and, and be contrite. Whereas the handling of this story has had the truth has been dragged out of number 10 day by yeah. painful day over about six months. Yeah, yeah. just in terms of, of what we saw, cl clearly in terms of the strategy, the government is suffering on the big picture stuff. You know, it, there, there is a degree of truth to the fact that actually there is an awful lot for the government to be doing right now. And there is an awful lot of focus on everything else. But just look at the way in which the amendment and the motion yesterday, this, the, once again, the Conservative government doesn't appear to, to, to know the mood of its own backbenches. Yeah, I think yesterday was a, was a hugely significant day in two regards. The first, as you say, is that the whips clearly believed they could get the Conservative MPs to vote for this amendment and discovered that they couldn't. So that tells us that the mood among Conservative MPs isn't quite as supportive of the PM as maybe uh, some people were having us believe two or three days ago. And secondly, I think Steve Baker's intervention yesterday uh, is very significant. You know, Steve was a key person uh, in terms of Theresa's downfall. Uh, he, you know, it's not someone I agree with ideologically, but he is a highly principled person and he's also a very effective operator. So if I was still doing my old job in number 10, I would be very worried about that intervention yesterday. So, so, so just in terms of the mood within the kind of Conservative Parliamentary Party at the moment, I mean, do, do you detect from the conversations that you will, I'm sure, be having uh, with colleagues at, you know, in the Commons, do, do you detect the death rattle uh, for Boris Johnson's time as Prime Minister? I mean, uh, on so many occasions up until now, people have predicted his demise and he has, and, and he has stayed firmly put. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, I think what I would say is that there is severe discomfort and what the Prime Minister has done and, and MPs having to defend it. The thing that is, the two things that I think are keeping him in place at the moment, if this had happened two or three months ago, before the conflict in Ukraine and before the problems that Rishi Sunak has got into, then I think definitely that would have been the end. So the, the two things that are allowing people like Connor to, to mount a defence of the Prime Minister are don't change right now given what's going on in the world, and the lack of a clear, obvious alternative that MPs could switch to. But, you know, I think this story's got a way to play yet. We're, I suspect the Prime Minister is going to receive more fines because actually the, the birthday party event was probably the least egregious of the breaches that we've read about. We're going to get the Sue Gray report now. We've got this Privileges Committee investigation. So and my own view has been very clear for a while that the Prime Minister should go on because I think what he's done is indefensible. And I don't think it's in the interest of the Conservative Party for him to stay. But not all MPs are at that point yet. I suspect this has got a, a way to go still. How concerned, then, should the party's strategist be uh, about the May local elections? I mean, I saw some speculation this morning it could be as high as 800 seats lost uh, across the board. But you always have to bear in mind, the Conservatives have been in government since 2010. The government tends to lose seats at local elections. I mean, it, it's possible they can spin their way out of this one. Yes, I, I think it depends how bad the results turn out to be. You, you would, ex you know, let's be honest... We've got, a, we've got a cost of living crisis going on at the moment, which is not uh, ultimately caused by the government. It's a, it's a global economic situation that every advanced economy is facing. But understandably, voters are concerned and angry about that and feeling that the government hasn't done enough to support them. Uh, and then you've got this party gate issue on top of that. So the, 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 the thing that Conservative MPs will be looking at afterwards is how bad were the results relative to previous years, to try and get a gauge of how strongly... Uh, the public feel about uh, this issue. And that could be another trigger point, as could be the Wakefield by-election that we've got coming up uh, at some point in the near future. Just to conclude, in all seriousness, what, what do you think of Boris Johnson as an individual and as a prime minister? I've read your book, so I've got a rough idea. So, look, I, I have a slightly schizophrenic view of him. I think he has some real qualities. I think if you take 
Ukraine, he's handled that issue exactly as I would have wanted my Prime Minister to do it. But I'm afraid in other regards, he falls short of what I think we all have a right to respect, uh, to expect in terms of our Prime Minister. And in this particular story, it's not just what he did at a time when all of the rest of us were being, he, he passed laws severely restricting all of our freedoms and then didn't obey them himself. But it's the way he's behaved since those allegations first came, like the way the truth has been dragged out of him. So uh, my my own view is very clear that the that we we he's he, he he's failed if you like to pass the test of acceptable behavior for a prime minister and he needs to go. Uh, but ultimately this is a decision that conservative MPs uh, only they have got a say in this until the next election. Uh, so there are definitely some things he's done that he can be proud of and that I think most people in this country would support but in several critical regards, he falls short of what we have a right to respect in terms of uh, Prime Minister.